right, everybody. I got another very special guest for y'all this week. I want everybody to welcome Mr. Jed McKay. Welcome, Jed. How's it going? It's going good. How's everything on your end? Good, man. Just uh, just got my second vaccination about an hour ago. So, uh, yeah, I'm just ready to re-enter the world. Yes. Uh, which one did you end up getting? Uh, Moderna. Moderna, yeah. That one... It, that took a day away from me, but it's it's well worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm not really sure what to expect. So my wife and I have been drinking a lot of like Gatorade, uh, I guess electrolytes, uh, vitamins, you know, whatever. So yeah. we're we're hopefully hopefully going to beat it. But yeah. we, you know, we'll see. Yeah, got to do what we got to do. Get back to normal, right? Yeah, exactly. Or some some semblance thereof. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Jed, let's let's start where it all starts. What uh, what got you into comics? You've always been into comics, and then at what point were you like, "Hey, I think I can make these things"? <laughs> uh, I mean, I've always been into comics. Uh, you know, I came up reading comics. My bookshelf over there, I can see like you know the Tin Tin books that uh, I, like, I learned how to read on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was reading those. Um, a lot of like uh, Carl Barks and Don Rosa Duck stuff. Uh, and then gradually just started reading, you know, like mainstream kind of superhero books because uh, my dad had a big collection of them uh, through through like the basically the whole ru- whole run of the 70s. So that's what I would come up reading is, you know, uh, Conan, Master of Kung Fu, um, you know, anything that he had got then is just what I read kind of over and over again. You know, a lot of war stuff, uh, various runs of Avengers spider-man dr strange just kind of the the whole the whole shema- whole shebang and uh yeah so i basically you know came up reading comic books right from the start uh and you know i was always kind of drawing as a kid and making up stories and stuff like that uh and it wasn't until probably when i was you know last couple of years of high school when i started getting interested in comics that weren't you know my dad's old stuff <laughs> and uh kind of the, the the used bookstore and the town I went to school at, they were started getting in comics, and uh, the guy was running it had the you know stacks of previews, uh, mag, the you know, previews catalog. So he just give those out to if you bought enough crap from the store, and that kind of got me really interested in like what was out there because I I didn't realize how wide the kind of span of stuff out there was, and at the same time I was you know getting really interested in the you know the eighties black and white stuff that. It had like a really kind of rough around the edges look that made me think that a comic book doesn't have to be something that is super professionally produced in New York. It's something that someone can do just on their own. And that really made me think that I could make my own comics if I wanted to. Uh, I didn't because, uh, as it turned out, I couldn't draw well enough or fast enough. But uh, I was always interested in it. And then when I went to university, would have been like 2001 uh there were a lot of people like me who wanted to make comic books but with the internet and you know message boards uh it was really easy to get in touch with other people and get excited with other people about the stuff they're making and that was like a hugely formative thing for me like it was before like most forms of social media as we understand it now uh you know the more sort of I don't know if insular is the best word, but they're very small communities of people. And then that's often a really interesting uh, incubator for people's ideas and their talents and their skills. So I was on a couple of those boards and one of them, I think, you know, I would be, I put my art up there for critique and stuff. And it was, you know, not very good, but kind of was what it was. Uh, and eventually uh, I hooked up with my friend Sheldon Vella, who was uh, also on that board he's an artist in australia and we basically hooked up uh, i was writing stories and he was drawing them this had been like the mid 2000s at this point in time and uh yeah that's sheldon eventually got picked up to do some marvel work and he brought me along with him that's awesome yeah that would be around the time of the like the bendis message mm-hmm. boards would that be a correct time frame? I mean, maybe. Like, I was never on with the really big ones, like the Bendis boards or the Warren mm-hmm. Ellis forums or anything like that. Uh, I was I was mainly on one call. Well, I was on the Jim Mafood's 40-ounce comics boards for a while. Then, 
we made the jump to RPS, Rock, Paper, Scissors, which later turned into Enter Void, which was kind of like my, my main stomping grounds as far as art, uh, art message board or comics message boards went. And, you know, we, got, we just had a fair few people from that board went on to be pros, like, you know, Sheldon Bella, James Stokoe, Marley Zarcone. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, statistically, a lot of people went on to have uh, careers in comic books, which is, you know, pretty wild. Yeah. So you you jump over, you're working at Marvel. Uh, I know you, you jumped around to a few things here and there. What was your first, uh, it's in your eyes, your first big break? Would it be Black Cat or is it something before even that? I mean, I think it's kind of a series of big breaks. Like, I've been working steady for Marvel for, what, going on three years, I think? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, basically ever since I got Daughters of the Dragon, which was 2018. So, yeah. And, but prior to that, like, my first Marvel work was like 10 years ago. So I went through like real kind of like feast and famine periods where I do like an eight page short and then nothing for four years. And I do like another eight page short and then nothing for another four years. So I could say Daughters of the Dragon was my big break is the first series that I got to do, which was, you know, really huge going from doing, you know, eight page shorts and like, you know, one shots to doing a full, you know, six issue or like three double sized issue series. Um, and that one really kind of opened up a lot of doors for me. It was mm-hmm. digital, digital only until it came out in trade. So it wasn't exactly like, you know, tearing up the sales charts or anything, but it was something that, uh, you know, Nick, the editor on it really liked and really kind of, um, put my name in his head as someone who can do a certain thing. And because mm-hmm. of daughters, that's where I got black hat. Uh, Nick called me up. He said, listen, we're doing. Uh, Black Cat series are spinning it out of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, I basically want you to do, take like the same energy that was in Daughters of the Dragon because we'll never get to do another Daughters of the Dragon series. They're not exactly a huge property, but I want you to basically take that, but do it with Black Cat. And I was like, sure, I guess, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. And then Black Cat, you know, had a much, I think, much greater level of success than anyone expected. So that uh, really kind of. You know, daughter's got my foot in the door, and the black hat, you know, opened the door for me. Yeah, I always thought like I personally was never a big black cat fan, but when they when they announce characters like that, I'm like, okay, five issues and they're done. And you're going on what thirteen now? Uh, let's see, we got issue eight coming out next month, so that will be twenty one issues all told from the yeah. first series and then the the relaunch. So that's a that's a big accomplishment of itself. Uh, was it always from day one the plan to do an Infinity crossover with Black Cat, or was that stuff that came along along the road where you're like, "Hey, it'd be cool if we did this"? Yeah, at day one the plan was to get past five issues. Yeah, because uh, like you know, you know, like this business, you know, now it's an ongoing, and then it's canceled at five issues before the first issue comes out. So. Originally, we thought, okay, we're going to shoot for 10 issues. If we get 10 issues, we're lucky. Uh, and that was kind of my goal. I'm like, if we, if we can get 10 issues, if we don't get, you know, shit canned at five, then I, you know, I consider it a job well done. I think that we've, you know, accomplished what we wanted to do. But we kind of, you know, we're building up that story, the Thieves Guild, the Black Fox, and Odessa Drake, and all that stuff. And I had a set to basically finish up in, in 10 issues. Because that was kind of like the, the shoot for the moon goal. But as it went on, like, okay, well, actually, this is doing, you know, pretty well. We're going to pad, we're not pad this out, but we're going to, you know, expand on it. And it's like, we haven't done a crossover with any of the X Men stuff. So we'll throw, you know, two issue Wolverine arc in there. Uh, then when we came back, I said, well, we're going to start with a new number one. And also, we're going to do a King of Black story before we, uh, you know, go back to what we were doing. Another three issues in there. Um, and yeah, it just kind of expanded, expanded until, you know, that, that 10 issue story, which now that I think about it would have been extremely tight in 10 issues, uh, <laughs> you know, ended up being told, you know, I have to cut King of Black. That's like, what, 15 issues? Cause we just wrapped that up in issue seven. So I don't know, 16, it would have been 16 issues. Okay. And then after that, we're kind of like, well, where do we go from here? 
And Nick was like, we, we got to go big. We got to steal the Infinity Stones. <laughs> and I was like, shit, I was, I was joking about that back when we did promo for the, the series. But okay, I guess we're doing it. That's yeah, that's awesome. I I remember when they announced that, I was, and I was just sitting back reading the new the uh, press release for it, and I was like, "Black Black Cat Infinity." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I was impressed that uh, not only I mean, like I said, I, not only that book has gone on for so long, but that you you hit what for Marvel fans like Infinity is the crisis of Marvel. Like it's the thing that we all. Every time they announce Affinity something, we're all just like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, what's, <laughs> and we all like, go what's, straight what's to happening? it. What's happening? Like, how's, <laughs> how's this going to shake up? Like, <laughs> you know, cosmos shaking or you know, bobbles of cosmic import. But I remember the thing that that first got uh, myself and Mike to really like draw attention to your work was when they announced the uh, Mech Assault. Book. Oh, Avengers Mech Strike, yeah. Mech Strike. That's I keep calling it Mech Assault. That's an old video game. Um, and we're both sitting there like, hey, we love Kaiju. Uh, you're going to put Avengers in giant mech suits. I'm down for that. And then I read <laughs> it, and I just got uh, issue four sitting in a pile over here. I read it the other night, and it's really good. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, that's, that, that's generally what we try for. Yes. Uh, was that something that was brought to you, or... Um, did you have this idea for let's put Cap in a giant mech with a giant shield? No, no, no. That, that that's kind of came to me, you know, mostly fully formed. I think um, it was like a merchandising thing. They're looking to uh, uh, like a, I think a developer, you know, came to them saying we want to do this thing. Like you, know, you saw the Funko Pops and stuff for that. So you know, it came to me. Uh, Tom Brevoort emailed me. He said. Uh, you know, we're, we're developing this thing. We've got these designs for these robots. The Avengers are going to be in them. I'm like, okay, cool. Why is that? Why are they in them? He's like, well, I don't know. You tell me. I'm like, all right, <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm down. We'll, we'll figure it out. So we kind of went back and forth on like what it was going to be, uh, how we wanted, like, because like they're, they had the suits, but that's it. So we're like, well, you know, these are the Avengers. These guys like fight, you know, Thanos and like, you know, the Celestials and Galactus and shit. Why do they need robot suits? So, you know, the first kind of thing was to figure out why they need these suits. Like, what's, you know, why does the Hulk need a robot suit with, you know, purple pants painted on? Like, what is it, what kind of threat will cause them to require these tools? And, you know, we kind of figured that out. And, yeah, like, I just had a lot of fun with it. I kind of, I'd never written the Avengers before. I'd never written any book with that kind of level of power before. Because, uh, you know, like, I'm the guy that writes, like, Black Hat and, like, Taskmaster, where a threat for them is, like, I don't know, a guy with a gun, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, whatever the Avengers can handle. So, and, you know, I got to, got to dig into some fun stuff. And like, it's, it's an out-of-continuity out story. It's not a story that uh, is fine, you know, dancing between the raindrops and, uh, you know, Jason Aaron's Avengers, which means I'm kind of tear the roof off and just kind of do whatever I want. Or it's like, what do I want for villains? Like, oh, well, shit, let's, we'll have Kang. Why not? No one else is using it because this is an incontinuity. It's like, should we, should we put Thanos in there as an ally? Sure, why not? <laughs> it's like, we'll have the Black Panther be empowered by the cosmic forces of eternity. I'm like, yeah, all right, awesome. Love it. we we'll put some little stars in the black spots in the suit. So Those, oh, those no, are sorry, always the most fun, too. Like, I, I love continuity. I think as a comic fan, we all love continuity, but yeah. getting those stories out of continuity once in a while, where you just kind of do whatever you want. And, <laughs> and yeah, I, I, from issue one, I remember we were just both fell in love with that book, and I've been enjoying it ever since. I'm glad to hear it. I know, uh, I think it's a book that's sort of struggled to find its audience. Uh, a lot of people are expecting a lot of different things from it. Um, but I think... I also think it's a book that kind of, as each issue comes out, it makes a little more sense to people. Uh, you know, we try to leave each issue off on a cliffhanger and also with each issue, like escalate, you know, the threats and the problems. Um, Cause you know, they're the Avengers. You got to put them in a spot. And was, was adding Kang, was that just a, a good timing kind of thing with what's going on in Loki and the MCU or did you I, guys I, have I, that planned? No, I, I just I just like Kang. I think he's cool. Yeah. He's got 
He's one of those guys who has a ridiculous like 1960s design mm -hmm. that is still it's ridiculous, but it's still too good to change. Like you're not going to redesign Kang. You're not going to do better than like purple thigh boots and like that weird blue face. Like he's awesome. And also like he's just a complete asshole. Like he's just a jerk and you know writing this book you know he's just so smug and he's just so like he's so full of himself it just makes him a lot of fun to work with yeah he's a, he's a great villain underused too i'm glad to see him get a spotlight not only in your book but just in marvel as a whole now like with the kang miniseries coming out and everything but we could go on forever about kang <laughs> but actually that's it's, it's very fortuitous too because uh, carlos Magno, who drew uh, mech strike is drawing that kang mini so that's gonna be really good which yeah, and Carlos, uh, you you couldn't have they couldn't have picked a better artist for that book because I remember from page one I opened it up and I was like, this is this is beautiful. Oh yeah, <laughs> he just did such a fantastic job on everything in that. And that's the thing, like it's it's like that kind of you know late nineties, early two thousands, like widescreen comics. You know, like it's very easy for me to open up my Word doc you know, hit enter my template and write, there's a giant biomechanide stamping through a city. And I'm like, well, that page is done. I'm done. And Carlos <laughs> has to draw the thing. But like, he was, he was unstoppable. Like he was unfazed. Anything I wrote, he would make it bigger. Like anything I set out for him, he would just make it louder. Like it's amazing. He, I think he made a lot of problems for us, or a lot of difficulty for himself, but like he kept, he rose to the occasion every time. Yeah. And so, that book's going to be ending next month, I believe. I think so, correct? yeah. Yeah. And are you still on for the long haul for Black Cat? Are they still asking you for more on that one? I mean, I'll write Black Cat as long as I'll publish it. Yeah. It's, um, then we got the Infinity Stone stuff coming on. So, uh, like, you, you only know so far in advance how long your book is going to go. So, you know, until I'm told to stop sending them scripts, I will keep writing it. So that's stuff you got going on right now. Let's talk a little bit about the future. You had two pretty big announcements recently. Um, one coming up here in a few weeks. So let's yeah. talk Moon Knight. Um, what do, what are your what are your plans for Moon Knight in the short term? Like, what? How do you see the character, and how do you sell it to people that are, might be interested in it? The thing I like about Moon Knight is that he's he's a character that like he's very. I, think, I don't know if iconic is a word to use for a character who gets published so infrequently, but like he's got a great look, he's got a great name, and that just puts it right out there. Like, he's just such an appealing character just on those points alone. And I think it's kind of a drag that he just never has a series. Like when was the last one? When did the last one finish up? Uh, two or three years ago, it was Jeff Lemire, and I'm going to zone on the artist's name. No, because oh, yeah. Jeff, Jeff Lemire started, but then Max Max Bemis, Bemis, or Bemis oh B Bemis, yes, he yeah. finished it. He finished it. So that was I mean, that was a few years ago, and then you know prior to that there was the, the 2016 series or 2014 series, and then you know blah blah blah. But the thing I like about Moon Knight is he's your costume vigilante character, but he's also an outsider, and that nobody likes Moon Knight within the Marvel universe. Uh, you know, especially now after this whole age of Kanshu malarkey. <laughs> and he's this kind of, it's kind of the opposite way to do with Black Cat, where Black Cat is, you know, a criminal, but everybody likes her, mostly. Whereas Moon Knight is a hero, but nobody likes him. And he's he's the guy who always makes the wrong choice. He's the guy who always makes mistakes. And he's always trying to fix that. So we're looking at Moon Knight and he's, you know, starting fresh. He's back on the streets where you know I think he belongs. Uh, he's trying trying to help people. He's dealing with weird problems on the street. He's opened his midnight mission where people can find him and you know petition him for aid. So you know he's out there. He's accessible, and I think we're looking to build a real I don't know if where is authentic, but like you know a real believable street level life for Moon Knight. While also looking at how he's rebuilding his life in the wake of taking down the Avengers and conquering the world. You know, two things that are kind of tough to live down when you're doing it on the say-so of an insane moon god. So we're kind of looking at the fallout of that. And also, 
we're looking at kind of Moon Knight. What does his book look like? Who are the characters he interacts with in the Marvel Universe? Who is going to be his cast? What sort of you know bad guys is he going to deal with? You know, there's going to be new characters. There's going to be old characters. Not necessarily old Moon Knight characters. But I think this is going to be a really new, exciting look at you know, Moon Knight out on the streets and dealing with A, like what is the legacy of Moon Knight? Is it one of just absolute brutality and violence? Is it something that's more considered and you know b how can he put his life back together and is putting his life back together or attempting to uh as part of that dealing with some of his split personalities and uh how many of those are, can we expect the level of like five or six different personalities or are you going to try to tone it down a little bit and bring it down to like just maybe just his two main ones well we're we're not doing as we're not going as heavy on the dissociative identity stuff, That's disorder good stuff, just because it's something that is hard to get out of when you're doing the Moon Knight series. When you start getting into it too much, it just becomes into the focus of the entire series, and there's only so many times you can do that. So uh, you know, when when we're putting this together, one of the sort of dict- dictates of the job, I said, okay, what, what do you want from Moon Knight series? Like, what what shall I pitch you? They say, well, we want to, you know, shy away from the Khonshu stuff, and we want to shy away from, you know, getting too hard into the DID stuff, because both of those things just immediately take over the book. Mm-hmm. And you want to, you know, just try something different this time, uh, move in a different direction. So, you know, Mark still has associative identity disorder. He's in therapy, and, you know, a big part of this book is his conversations with the therapist. He's got, uh, he's working with Dr. Andrea Sturman, who was uh, Jack Monroe, uh, the Nomads therapist, which I guess she doesn't have a great track record because old Jack didn't end up too well, but (laughs) um, because part of that is, I think it's really interesting how alienated a person Mark Spector is. And with things like his dissociative identity disorder, uh, I've made the conscious choice not to use like thought captions which are something i usually rely on quite heavily like you know if you read black cat you know it's half the fucking page of these boxes Mm -hmm. um so rather i wanted the reader to see mark the same way that a you know another character in the book would we're not party to his private thoughts we're only party to what he chooses to tell people and you know therapy is great but there's always a question is is he telling the truth or is he telling her what she wants to hear you know, how much, how deep are we getting into Mark Spector's mind? Because for a certain amount of the series, all we see is the mask. He's either Mr. Knight or he's Moon Knight. And we, it's up to us to eventually figure, try to figure out, you know, where does Mark Spector fit in between those two characters? That's really great to hear. I, I love Moon Knight, but I do feel sometimes uh, people can, like you said, rely on that crutch a little bit too much of like he's the wacky guy with five personalities and i i think that's a a problem with the character too is that i don't i don't like the idea of treating mental illness extremely lightly yeah uh, or or necessarily treating as a superpower i don't think it's something that really plays in this day and age so it's it's something i've been trying to be trying to consciously avoid yeah, that's why I did like the more recent runs. I can't remember if it was Garth or Warren that did it, um, and then after him, Lemire, where they did deal with those things, but they they didn't go as much into the like he thinks he's Wolverine, isn't that wacky, guys? And and they really dug more deep into like no, this guy's messed up, and this is what's going through his head. And I, I like yeah. that, but I also I like what you're saying. I I want to see him go back to just being kind of the guy in the street punching bad guys. Yeah, and I mean, ultimately, I'm not going to write a better, uh, you know, reconciling with your identity story than Jeff Lemire did. Uh, you know, that stuff he did with Greg Smallwood and that uh, in his run was, like, I'm not going to be able to top that. You know, yeah. so I'm going to I'm going to try to do do something that I can do uh, well, as opposed to then trying to just do his thing again, which when it's already been resolved. Exactly. So you got that, and then I believe the only other book you have after, coming out after that is the infamous Death of Doctor Strange. That's right. Am I correct about that? Death of Doctor Strange starting, I think, September. 
So S- September, yeah. it's your it's your birthday present to me. Um, okay. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad, don't say I never gave you anything. <laughs> So I know you can't talk much about it because it's so far away, but what can you say about it? Uh, I mean, we're going to see, it's, you know, people say, oh, Marvel, you know, you're you false advertising. You're lying to us and solicits. The, co- the covers are, aren't telling the truth. You're going to see just that. You're going to see the death of Doctor Strange. We're going to see what that means. We're going to see how it happens. We're going to see why it happens. We're going to see what's done of it in the, uh, in the wake of it. We're going to see what happens to the world if it doesn't have a Sorcerer Supreme? And how do, how do all the people in Doctor Strange's life, you know, his friends and his enemies, deal with this? Um, more than that, I can't really say. I can't say there's going to be some dynamite one-shots uh, coming with it as well. I've been talking to some very exciting creators who I think are going to really, uh, you know, bring a real raft of talent to it. Uh, I'm doing one of the shot, one of the one-shots too, which I'm very excited about. I think it's a very good, very good issue that I have written. So, yeah, other than kind of vague hype, there's not a whole lot more I can tell you than that. But, you know, Lee Garbett's drawing it. It's going to look great. Uh, you know, I think you've seen some of the raft of covers that are coming out for it. So uh, I know some people get turned off by something, you know, by the death of a character. Um, but to that, I would, I would say I'm not I don't kill off characters lightly. It's not something I like to do just for, you know, just for oomph. Or just for interest. So, you know, the Death Doctor Strange. It's you know, it's it's going to be there. It's going to be important. We're going to see how it shakes out. Awesome. So, yeah, Jed, uh, keep up the great work. We're enjoying what you're doing over here at Force Comic Thank News. Uh, hopefully, everybody else out there is as well. I'm looking forward to some Moon Knight action, and uh, I'll definitely be there for Death Doctor Strange as well. Um, a couple more weeks, we got Moon Knight on the streets. I'll be here. You'll probably see me uh, talking about it on the internet very soon. <laughs> but Fantastic. If uh, everybody out there wants to follow you a little bit further, where's the best place to send them? Twitter? Instagram? Uh, Twitter. Uh, I have an Instagram uh, for probably a year or two. I've never posted a photo. Uh, <laughs> people keep following me, so I apologize for that. Uh, you're not getting much out of that experience. Uh, but yeah, best place to follow, find me is on Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com slash Jed McKay. J-E-D-M-A-C-K-A-Y. Uh, where I basically just promote my stuff and occasionally make jokes when I'm drinking. So there you go. That's all you need. So everybody out there, uh, check out Jed on Twitter. He's a fun follow, and uh, also I'll have in the show notes down below a link to the previews catalog with the Moon Knight solicit in it, so that you can just click that subscribe button and send it to your local comic shop. Jed, thanks so much for uh, being on today, man. I really enjoyed talking to you. And uh, yeah, it's my best, my pleasure. Best of luck with everything moving forward, man. Perfect. Thanks.